Hey everyone. In a previous video, I talked about the basics of GreenSock and how to animate something and go beyond just kind of the standard animation inside of Articulate Storyline. And I showed this example right here where you hover over something and it kind of scales up and it bounces and some image will animate in. That was actually really well received. And so I'm gonna show you how to build this one specifically. We talked about just the basics in the last one, but we're gonna talk specifically how to get this scale up, how to get it to bounce and everything like that. So let's go ahead and get started. Welcome back, my name is Jeff Batt, and if you haven't checked out my website, go ahead and check out my website at learningdojo.ninja. Here you can check out all previous blog posts, everything uh, Articulate Storyline, Adobe Captivate, Augmented Reality, as well as just helpful production tips as well. You can also download templates, free Articulate Storyline templates, as well as XAPI templates. And if you're new to any of these subjects, you can also check out full courses, everything from A to Z on Articulate Storyline 360, Adobe Captivate, XAPI Fundamentals, Articulate Rise, Custom Scorm, and HTML5 video. Now in that video with the green sock and just getting started with basic animations in green sock using Storyline, I showed you how to just do basic animations, how to move an object over to a certain location on the stage and so forth. So we're actually gonna make this real world application like I showed you before, and we're gonna get this to scale up and get this to animate. So let's go ahead and pull this project up, and it's really a simple project. All I have are three boxes with some text. And let me go into uncheck the fit to zoom. I'm gonna actually move this to 100% here. And you can see here, I have some images on top that are set to animate in. So we have the stage kind of set up here, and I'm going to go ahead and just apply some of the green sock, the basic green sock animation to this so we can get that scale effect, which is not something that you can do automatically inside of a storyline. So if you come in here, you can go in and apply a scale or a fly in or a fade, but that will basically take it from outside of the stage to on the stage or from really small to really large. And I don't want that. I just want it to where it's currently at and increase it a little bit and get that bounce effect. And so when you publish Articulate Storyline courses, it does automatically include this green sock animation. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up at greensock.com. Now, if I go into the docs right here, I'm gonna go in just as a reference to this getting started section. This gives me all the code that I can do out of the box without having to attach anything when I publish from uh, Articulate Storyline out here. So we are going to be using JavaScript, but the snippets will be down below the video, so you can just copy and paste. And that's exactly what I'll be doing, is just copying this code and applying it to what we see here. As you start to scroll down, you can see, like we talked about in the last video, how to move it on the X value and so forth. But now we're gonna be talking about how to scale it. Let's go back into this example. And the first thing that you need is to uh, give each of these objects a name. We need to be able to, from JavaScript, talk to these objects that are on the stage. Now, the way that you give it a name inside of Articulate Storyline is by right clicking here and going down and don't, right click actually in the text if you have text in the shape. I right click on the edge here and then go down to accessibility. When you go down to accessibility, you can give it this alternate text here. And this object is visible to accessibility tools. Make sure that you have that checked as well. This is how I'm going to reference this object for green sock. Now I need to do that with each object that I'm going to animate. So I'm gonna right click here. This one I named object underscore two. And then this one I named object underscore three. Now I did the same thing with the images too. So I'm gonna right click and go into accessibility. And this is IMG one. And then I believe that one's just IMG two and IMG three. So all of those are named. Now we can talk to them using this code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this hover over. Uh, as soon as you hover over it, it's going to trigger this code. So we need to create and execute JavaScript when you hover over each of these objects. So let's go ahead and start out with this one right here. So I'm gonna add a trigger and we're going to execute the JavaScript 
And that JavaScript, we're going to copy and paste here in a second, but the action is going to be execute JavaScript right here. Now we're gonna come back to that JavaScript and this is where we're gonna copy and paste the code from below the video. And I'm gonna go ahead and choose the win. This is important because when this code fires is when uh, is important to how you want this interaction to happen. You don't want it to be on click, you want it to be on hover. So we're gonna go ahead and select this drop down box and we're gonna go to mouse hovers over. When the mouse hovers over this object one, this is when the code is going to fire. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into my JavaScript here and I'm gonna take that code that I have here from below the video. It's just really two lines of code with some comments here, and we're gonna walk through it. Now I'm gonna change this to object one, and so you can see right here. So the object, uh, I can call this the object one or something, or object one, it, that name is really up to you. And then what we're doing is we're talking to the window. And I'm just gonna walk you through this JavaScript here if you're new to JavaScript, so you at least know what's going on. You don't have to type it, you just copy and paste it here. So the document is the window of where this course is in. So it's really the browser window. So Safari, Chrome, Firefox, whatever uh, IE or, you know, hopefully not IE, it's so old, but uh, Edge or whatever application that you're using to browse the internet. That's what the document is. Then we're going to go to query selector all. Now the selector is the name of the object that we're trying to reference. So we are gonna go in and just take a look at all of Storyline and all of the files, and we're gonna find this specific object. Now, it's important to know that when you publish to Storyline, whether it be SCORM, XAPI, or just to the web, essentially what you're doing is you're taking everything that you built inside of Storyline and you're publishing a website. It is a website that runs off of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So that's really what we're doing here is we're publishing a website. So that's why JavaScript works is because all the functionality is basically JavaScript and we're just adding to it. So it's important to know that even though you're not a web developer, per se, you are working with web when it gets published. The next thing is we need to usually find a class ID. That is a name of an object inside of HTML. But in this case, we're doing the data-accessibility, and that's what the ACC stands for, text. And we're finding that accessibility text, which in this case is inside of these quotes, object one. So the only thing I need to change here is inside of those quotes. Do not delete those quotes, that's important, but you can change everything that's inside of those quotes for whatever name you actually gave it. That's how we're at least identifying it, saying, hey, we're talking to you here. And whenever we're talking to you, from now on, we're just gonna use the name of the object one. So I don't have to type out this whole line of code every time I wanna to talk to that one object. And that's an important concept inside of JavaScript is you're talking to objects that are on the stage. You're going to add functionality to it. So that's what we're doing here. But right here, whatever I name it needs to match what's right here because now this is the green sock code. And this is exactly what I get from the green sock website right here. So GSAP2, I want to I want to animate it to this uh, value, basically. Animation is basically going from point A to point B. So point A is going to be where it's currently at. Point B is what properties you want to change uh, once it gets to point B, basically. So that is important to know with just animations in general. Now, if I come back into here, because I'm talking or I renamed it the object one, I wanna go ahead and just paste that, well, let me name it or copy this right here. So just get the name and I'm gonna paste it right there. So then it has a comma and then inside of these brackets, the curly brackets, we change all the properties. Every property that's gonna change to point B, we're gonna put it inside of here and all the different options are available on the documentation as you start to scroll. So you can see X value, Y value, you can see also amount of time, um, rotation, other things like that. There's a lot of different options, a lot of flexibility here. So I'm gonna come back into here and what we're doing is we're scaling. We're gonna scale it by 100% 0.05. So if I did just one actually right here, 
that is gonna scale it by nothing because it's already at the 100%. And I don't want it to go to two, that would basically, if I did two right here, that would basically double the size of what it currently is. I don't want that. I just want a slight little increase. And so that's why after playing around with it, I kind of settled on 1.05. Now the other thing is the easing. The easing makes the animation a little bit more realistic. So it will start out um, slow and then it will uh, increase or it will start out fast and then it will decrease as far as size goes. So that's what easing does. And so right now we want it to bounce. When you have, whenever it animates to this size, we want it to bounce and there's different types of easing effects. If you go back to the documentation, the easing is kind of down towards the bottom and you can see right here all the different possibilities and I chose bounce. That was the effect that I wanted to uh, apply to this. Now the word out, when it says dot out or dot in or dot in out, that is where you want that easing to apply to. Do you want the easing to apply at the end of the animation? Then you use the word out. Think of um, the word out as end and think of the word in as in start. So do you want it to apply, apply at the start of the animation? Then you would use the word in instead here. So in this case, we want it to bounce out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. And now we've only applied this to one of the objects here. Once you've applied it to one, essentially what it is is just kind of copying and pasting it to the others. And I'm not sure if it actually saved. Yeah, it did. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and click OK and then click OK here. JavaScript, you can't actually preview until you publish inside of Storyline, which doesn't take long. You could just publish this one page if you wanted to but I'm gonna go ahead because it's a small course, I'm gonna to publish to the web, I'm gonna to publish to my desktop here, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit publish. Now coming back over to my Mac side because I'm using Parallels, this is where it will publish to, and then I can go ahead and preview it once it's done. All right, so I don't need to zip it out or anything like that, but it's finished, so I can go back into here, double click on story.html, and then go into Green Sock Animations 2. Now I've only applied it to one object, but as soon as I hover over that object, notice how it will bounce in. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh that and show you that again here. So go into GreenSock Animations, hover over it, and it bounces, it increases, and it bounces. So that's good. However, we have a problem. As soon as I hover out of it, it doesn't return back to where it was before. So we need now need to kind of do the opposite, where we need to somehow trigger this to return. Now there's a couple different ways to do this. You could have this on a layer, so it would, um, as soon as the mouse hovers out, it like hides the layer or something. But what I've done is I've created this shape right here. And this shape is almost a hidden shape because it kind of looks, oh, it's the same color as the background, but it allows me to add a hover to this shape. Now you can do this in a lot of different ways. That's the beauty about development is there's a lot of different ways to accomplish the same thing. Uh, some ways are more efficient, some ways aren't, but honestly, whatever way you use and get used to, that's a good start in my opinion. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that same kind of code here. So I'm gonna go in and copy that code again, but we're gonna change something about it. When the user hovers over, and this is, I named this object, uh, this rectangle return trigger, because it's returning that back to where it was before. So I'm gonna come in here and just paste that there. But what we're doing, let's change it to the same thing that we had before. So this is gonna be the object one, the object one as well, is we're gonna scale it back. So I'm just gonna take that one back to the number one. So it's gonna go from that 0 0.05 back to where it was before. Now we can still have it kind of bounce out because I want it to bounce when it like goes back to its location. So that's still okay, but I'm really just kind of changing point B in this animation to be back where it was before. So just by that small little change, but applying it to this trigger or this uh, shape that's over, if it's um, at point 1.05, it will return it back to one, back to its original 100%, basically. That small little change, I'm gonna go ahead and execute and publish this out. And then once we have this, we basically just copy and paste it for the other objects. 
and it's really just a matter of copying that text and pasting it. And then we can do something different for like the images, but we'll talk about that later. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna close this window out because whenever you publish a new version, it's good to kind of wipe that window to close whatever you had out before. And so that way you don't have to clear your cache or anything. But now I'm gonna go into that green sock animation. Now it is going to trigger that code whenever I hover over that object, but because it's already at 100%, it really doesn't look like nothing or anything is happening at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and hover over and you can see it bounces out or it bounces in and it increases, but then I'm gonna hover over that shape and it will take it back to where it was before. So just a simple little change that will take it back. But now I get this and look how fast it is. I get this animation in and animation out, which is a really cool effect for your learners. Now I could still have like, um, click on it and it goes to another page or shows a layer or something like that. But really just applying this adds a lot more to me, a lot more style to your different interactions than what you can with what you can do with the out of the box type of animations and storyline. Now let's go ahead and with that in mind, I'm gonna take that JavaScript code and I'm going to copy it and I'm just gonna paste it into the other objects. So I'm gonna add a trigger. We're gonna execute the JavaScript trigger when this hovers over. So when hovers over object two, I selected this object so I already had it ready to go. And then I just paste that but instead of object two, we're gonna, or object one, we're gonna say object two, and we're gonna change that to object two, and we're gonna change that to object two right there. That's good, so I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And then go to object three, we're gonna do the same thing here, just paste that, and we're gonna reference object three here, and we're gonna say object three, and then object three. So same code, just a matter of copying and pasting it and changing the name of the objects. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay here, I'm gonna click okay here. And one other thing that we need to do is because when you hover over it, we don't know which object is going to be animated in. So right now, when I publish this out, just to show you what's gonna happen here. Now, the second time that you publish, it's gonna go a little bit faster because it doesn't have to build everything from scratch. But I'm gonna go ahead and hit story.html. I'm gonna go into green sock animation and I'm gonna hover over that. I'm gonna hover over this but notice when I hover out, that object is not animating that other one. We have to do the same thing on that shape to what we did with the other shapes. Because we don't know which shape it's going to be, what I need to do is basically uh, animate all of them back to where they were before. So it's a matter of just kind of copying this line of code and pasting it two more times here. So I'm gonna change that. And then I'm gonna change this one to object two. That's gonna be object three. And we're gonna change the name here, object two object three. And then what we can do here is change this line of code a little bit. If you want to apply the same effect in GreenSock to multiple objects, what we need to do is just put the, the name of the objects inside of brackets here. So really what I need to do is put a bracket here at the very beginning, a bracket here at the very end, and then use a comma to name or to add the other objects that are gonna have the same animation. So right now we're going to, oh, it's gonna be the object. Let me make sure it's named exactly the same here. So the object two, the object three, and I could just name it object two or object three, but all of these are going to animate back to the 1% or the 100% there. So I'm gonna click okay and let's save this and let's go ahead and preview or publish this out one more time here. Now, if you're using just Windows, you don't need to go back and forth between Mac and Windows, but I use Parallels because I'm a Mac person and I only really run Windows for Storyline. So I wish Storyline had a Mac version. But I'm gonna come in here and close out this window and I'm going to double click story.html and then I'm gonna go ahead and hover over all of these. And notice even when I move over to this object, because that hover shape is in between each of these objects, look how nice that is. So it's really fast as far as applying those effects because as soon as I reach the middle in between there, it's going to animate everything back to normal. So just a really cool effect to be able to do that. Now, if we wanted to animate the image as well, we could do that. And I'm gonna show you that's just kind of that code here. So I'm gonna execute JavaScript on the first one 
And really, I could bring this down a couple lines here. And it's kind of the same code, is, but we're talking to a different object. We're gonna talk to image one, so that's IMG1, and then IMG1 right there. And now we're going to apply uh, this, the Y, Y is up and down. We're gonna apply this by negative 50 because zero is this top one right here. So we're going to take where it's currently at and we're gonna take it and apply it negative. So it's gonna bring it down and we're using the ease effect of out. Now what I would want to do is also animate it back out to where it was before on that hover state of that shape. A little bit more work, but we're essentially doing the same thing with different options here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit publish and I'll show you exactly what's happening here. So I'm closing that window. I'll double click on story.html, go into here. Oh, it doesn't look like that one is applying. Let me check this real quick. Oh, I forgot to change this to one as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. Let's publish this out. It's usually one little thing that you miss. It's kind of frustrating sometimes, but that's also the, I mean, you're, if you like to troubleshoot, if you like to figure things out, coding is probably a way to go for you. All right, so I'm gonna double click on story.html and you can see right here. So as soon as I hovered over, I'm gonna hit refresh again. So restart. So as soon as I hover over that first one, it's going to animate in, but it doesn't animate out. So I'm gonna go back into this execute JavaScript and essentially what I need to do here for on that shape, we can come down a couple lines and then all I have to do is this right here. Taking images one, two, and three, I'm gonna come over here, paste that. So what all images, once I get all images applied, it's going to animate it back negative 236. So you may have to play around with the numbers, um, but that's what I found works for me. So now if I hit publish there, publish here, we're basically just returning it back to where it was before. All right, so I'm gonna double click on that story. Let's go to Greensock Animations 2, hover over it. As soon as I hover over the other one, it returns it back. Cool way to just add different types of effects here and different types of animations with only a little bit of, I mean, I didn't really need to type much myself. I just copied and pasted the code and um, applied that. So I think it's, extremely flexible. There's a lot more that you can do with GreenSock, a lot more possibilities that I'm just kind of scratching the surface here. But hopefully this uh, helps you to at least get started of how you can start applying GreenSock to take your, your interactions and your storyline pages a little bit further um, than what you can do out of the box inside of Storyline. So if you like this video, it really helps me a lot. If you go to my YouTube channel, you hit the like button and then you hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you get notified of all future videos as they come out and that really helps grow my channel as well. But if you wanted to also check out other videos, you could go back into my website at learningdojo.ninja. You can check out all different types of Storyline and JavaScript videos as well as just any kind of tips and tricks for Storyline, as well as um, XAPI. If you wanted to dive into XAPI, you can download templates. And then also, if you wanted to get everything about Storyline, you could go in and get the course, everything from A to Z on Articulate Storyline 360, or if you use Adobe Captivate, XAPI Fundamentals, Articulate Rise, Custom SCORM, or HTML5 video, you can check those out there. But that's all that I have for today, so thanks for checking out this video, and I'll see you next time.